ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed, the most truthful of speech, the best of words, are the words in the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدْيُ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ And the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَشَرُ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. قالوا المفلس فينا يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من لا درهم له ولا متاع فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المفلس من امتي من ياتي يوم القيامه بصلاته وصيامه وزكاته وياتي قد شتم هذا وقذف هذا واكل مال هذا وسفك دم هذا وضرب هذا فيقعد فيقتص هذا من حسناته وهذا من حسناته فإن فنيت حسناته قبل أن يقتص ما عليه من الخطايا أخذ من خطاياهم فطرح عليه ثم طرح في النار This hadith which is in the sunnah of al-Tirmidhi and it is sahih it is also found in the sahih of Imam Muslim Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, do you know who is the muflis? Do you know who is the bankrupt person? The one who's got nothing. So the messenger, they said, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the bankrupt amongst us is the one who has no dirham. He got no money and he has no property. He owns nothing. This is the poor one, the bankrupt one. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the bankrupt person in my ummah, is the one who comes on Yom Qiyamah, on the day of resurrection. And they come with their prayers, and they come with their fasting, and they come with their zakat, paying their zakat, their alms on their wealth. But yet, at that time, they also come having abused this person, and falsely accused this person, and wrongfully eaten the wealth of others, and spilled the blood of others, and they beat or hit this other one. So they will be seated, and this one is requited from his rewards. If his rewards are exhausted before the sins that he committed are requited, then some of their sins will be taken and cast upon him, and then he will be cast into the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, again, our Prophet ﷺ gave us in few words what if we were to implement, we would be successful. It would make us successful on that day of resurrection. Our notion is to always think that the bankrupt person has nothing. That the one who has nothing, Afwan, that the one who has nothing, this is the true bankrupt person. And even the companions, they said that when they were asked this question. That someone who doesn't tangibly own something, doesn't ta- have tangible wealth or property, this is the bankrupt person. And Allah, He said, وَأُحْذِرَةِ الْأَنفُسُ الشُّحْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, and human, 
The human inner selves are swayed by greed. As humans, greed is يعني, something that overtakes many of us and we seek Allah's refuge with that. Allah, uh, the people always wanting, never having enough, never being satisfied. So when we saw in the beginning of the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ, he said, المخلص من أمتي من يأتي يوم القيامة بصلاته وصيامه وزكاته The Messenger of Allah ﷺ is saying, no, the bankrupt one is the one from my ummah who comes with salah, fasting and zakah on the day of judgment, but he does those other things as we will mention. So the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, he's being specific to the ummah. People knowing that bankruptcy is something else, that being rich is something else other than just, yani if you have property or if you have wealth. So the bankrupt, they come with the salah, knowing that this salah has such a huge weight in Islam, that it differentiates you from the non-Muslim. كَمَا قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ سَلَّمَ الْأَحْدَ الَّذِي بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَهُمَ الصَّلَاةَ مَنْ تَرَكَهَا فَقَدْ كَفَرْ That the covenant between us and them those who are upon something different than this Islam is the Salah. Whoever leaves the Salah, faqad kafar. They have committed kufr. Even if they say the shahada, the one who abandons the prayer, the Sahaba, عنهم, they had a consensus that the abandonment of the action of Salah was the one thing they all agreed took the person out of Islam. وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بَيْنَ الرَّجُلْ وَبَيْنَ الْكُفْرِ وَالشِّرْكِ تَرْكُ الصَّلَاةِ That between a man and between being a disbeliever and a polytheist, a mushrik, is the abandonment of the prayer. So you come with this prayer, having done this prayer, this prayer that the Prophet ﷺ, even in the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal, رضي الله عنه, the Prophet ﷺ said, رَأْسُ الْأَمْرِ الْإِسْلَامُ وَعَمُودَهُ الصَّلَاةِ that the Prophet ﷺ, he referred to, he said, the head matter with us is al-Islam. That is the matter that concerns us. It's umud, it's pillar. What holds it up and supports it is the prayer. It is the salah. So this person will come, yawm al-qiyamah, with their prayers. That same prayer that Abdullah, he said, that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ said, أَوَّلَ مَا يُحَاسُدْ بِهِ الْعَبْدِ الصَّلَاةِ وَأَوَّلَ مَا يُقْضَى بَيْنَ النَّاسِ فِي الدِّمَاءِ And the Prophet ﷺ, he said the first thing concerning which a person will be judged for on the day of resurrection will be their prayer. طَيِّبْ You passed the Tawheed and Aqeedah test. Now, the first thing you'll be asked about is your prayer. فَإِنْ صَلَحَتْ فَقَدْ أَفْلَحَتْ فَقَدْ أَفْلَحَ وَأَنْجَهْ And if it is good, if it is sound, you'll be successful. You'll be happy, you'll be in a state of goodness, soundness, safety. وَإِنْ فَسَدَتْ فَقَدْ خَابَ وَخَسَرْ But if it is not sound, if your prayers are not sound, then you'll be in a state that is unfortunate and in a state of loss. So you come with this prayer to protect yourself from that situation, يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And you come with your fasting, the siyam, the fasting which is a deed, when it is done, it is done only for Allah. As we see in the hadith Qudsi from Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه, who mentions that the message of Allah وسلم, said that Allah Azza wa said, كل عمل ابن آدم له إلا الصيام فإنه لي وأنا أجزي به والصيام جنة. This fasting that we see in the Hadith Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa taala He said, Allah the Exalted, the Almighty said, every act of the son of Adam is for him, except for the fasting, except for the صيام. It is for me exclusively because I'm the one who truly knows whether he or she is truly doing this out of their love for me. So I will reward them for it. And this fasting is a, is a shield. A shield from the hellfire. So you come with the salah, you come with the fasting. And the narration, the, عفوان, and then you also come with the zakat. The sin of which we see the one who doesn't pay it on the day of resurrection will be very serious. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ آتَاهُ اللَّهُ مَالًا فَلَمْ يُؤَدِّ زَكَاتَهُ مُثْفِلَ لَهُ مَالَهُ شُجَاعًا أَقْرَأْ لَهُ زَبِيبَتَانْ يُتَوْقِهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَأْخُذُ بِلِهْزَمَتَيْهِ يَعْنِي بِالشِّدْقَيْهِ يَقُولُ أَنَا مَالُكَ أَنَا كَنْزُكَ أَنَا مَالُكَ أَنَا كَنْزُكَ ثُمَّ تَلَاهُ 
ثم تلا هذه الآية ولا يحسبن الذين يدخلون بما آتاهم الله من فضله إلى آخر الآية This hadith which we see in Sahih al-Bukhari the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said anyone to whom Allah has given wealth but he does not pay his obligatory zakat upon it to purify it he does not pay Allah what is due upon the wealth that he has been given then on the day of resurrection his wealth will be made and presented to him in the shape of a bald-headed poisonous snake lahu zabibatan two glands that are poisonous as well in his mouth and it will encircle around the neck and bite over his cheeks saying ana maluk ana kanzuk i am your wealth i am your treasure and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he recited the ayah and let not those who covetously withhold of what allah has bestowed upon them of his bounty to the end of the ayah My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is a punishment yawm al-qiyamah for the one who does not pay the zakat on the wealth that Allah has given him. You may fool yourself to say, well, I don't have to pay it on this. Or you remain ignorant to the rulings of zakat so you don't have to pay as much out. It's only your neck, your cheeks on the day of judgment. So this person now, he comes yawm al-qiyamah having prayed to safeguard him because not praying leads to kufr. Have been giving his zakat. Why? Because not doing so on the day of resurrection, he'll be consumed by that bald-headed poisonous snake biting at his cheeks, saying, "I am your wealth, I am your treasure." Have been fasted because it's only for Allah, and Allah will reward you for it. But it's all going to be worth nothing. Why? Because wayati had shakamahada. Because he's going to come on the day of resurrection. But to this person, he used to abuse him or her verbally, to curse them. To backbite them, to slander them, to revile them, to insult them, to call them names. How often do you find this, knowing that it can make your good? How often do you do this, knowing that it could make all your good deeds, your prayers, your fasting, your zakah, become worthless, become meaningless, become like dust, having no weight? In the Sunnah of Tirmidhi, we see in the relation, in the narration from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiAllahu anhu. That he said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, ليس المؤمن بالطعان ولا 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 اللعان ولا الفاحش ولا البذيء. This hadith, which is related in Tirmidhi and is greater as Hassan Al Hakim and Al Darqutmi, also narrated it as being mawkuf. The Prophet وسلم, he said, the believer is not one who insults and slanders other people. The believer is not one who curses other people. The believer is not one who is immoral, and the believer is not one who is shameless or vulgar. Clear direction that even if you come with your prayers and your fasting and your zakat, could be worth nothing because of how you treat the people. قال الله عز وجل ولا تلمزوا أنفسكم ولا تنابزوا بالألقاب بئس الاسم الفسوق بعد الإيمان. Allah subhanahu wa taala he says in Surah Al Hujurat. What means and do not defame. Allah commanding us, do not defame one another. Do not insult one another. Do not abuse one another. Do not call one another by names. How bad is it to insult one's brother after having faith? This is not the way of the Muslim. So yes, you can be the one who spends the days in the masajid praying, gives the zakat, fasts every other day, even on top of Ramadan, and yet what? It can be worthless because of how you insult the people, you abuse the people, you wrong the people, you backbite, you slander the people, and it will all come back on you. And Abi Huraira radiAllahu anhu قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أتدرون ما الغيبة قال الله ورسوله أعلم قال ذكرك أخاك بما يكره بما يكره قيل أفرأيت إن كان في أخي ما أقول قال إن كان فيه ما تقول فقد اختبته وإن لم يكن فيه فقد بهت بهته. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said you know what is back by you. The companions رضي الله عنهم أرضاهم they said Allah and His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم know best. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said backbiting implies that you're talking about your brother or sister behind their back in a manner which they do not like. This is backbiting. So the Sahaba they said, "O oh, Messenger of Allah, so said, but what if we're saying that what we're saying about him is true? What if what we're saying in about him is actually reality?" 
It's something we truly find in him. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, if that failing that you're talking about, if that thing you're talking about, your brother or sister without them knowing something that, something that they would dislike, is actually found in him or her, then you have still backbit him. This is ghibah. This is backbiting. Even when it's the truth about that person. And if it is not, then it is slander. Then it is slander. Because you're falsely accusing them and spreading tales about them. So, this abusing, reviling, name-calling, insulting. And yet we see it happening so much between one another. Between parents and their children. Between siblings. Between family members. Between brothers and sisters in the community. Well, just be prepared that all the good you may be doing may, may be worth nothing because you've chosen to take that road with respect to your fellow brothers and sisters in Islam. وَقَذَفَهَادَ They falsely accuse the other. They accuse them of being unchaste, of being promiscuous. Something that we see coming back again. Especially with social media. Trying to spread tales. قِيلَ وَقَالْ Spreading things about people to defame them, to dishonor them, to lower them in the sights of people, to get back at them with revenge. And for that matter, falsely accusing anyone of anything. This all falls under slander. Falsely accusing someone. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Rabi'ah, he narrated, he said, I witnessed the time of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman radiallahu anhum and those who came after them. I never saw them flogging a slave, whipping a slave as a punishment for qadaf, for this false accusation of adultery except 40 lashes. Yet you have this being done between spouses nowadays. Nowadays. And they'll both take the shahada, they will both bear witness that they're telling one of them is lying. That false accusation is worth 40 lashes. Is it worth your good deeds? Is it worth your prayers? Is it worth your fasting? Is it worth your zakat? To let those all go to waste because of a false accusation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اجْتَنِبُوا كَثِيرًا مِّنَ الظَّنِّ إِنَّ بَعْضَ الظَّنِّ إِثْمُ وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا وَلَا يَغْتَبْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا أَيُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا فَكَرِهْتُمُوهُ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, what means all you who believe? Avoid suspicion. Avoid suspicion. Indeed, some suspicions are sin. Some suspicions are sin. So Allah said, because you don't want to fall into that sin, avoid it. And do not spy. And do not backbite one another. Would you like that you would eat the flesh of your dead brother? None of us would want to do this, even if it meant living, we would not eat the flesh of our dead brother. Because of how يعني, disgusting of a thing it would seem. So Allah, He compared backbiting and slandering and engaging in suspicion that may lead to this, like eating the flesh of your dead brother, who would hate, you would hate to do so. So hate backbiting and fear Allah. Verily Allah is the one who accepts the repentance the most merciful أقول قال هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم إن الله يخلق لكم ذنوب إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد Brothers, if you can move forward that way those who are coming in can pray their two rakahs and uh, inshallah have a place to sit thereafter. Our Prophet ﷺ gave us the best guidance in the fewest of words. He asked the companions in this hadith, do you know who is al-muflis? Atadruna man al-muflis? Who is the one who is bankrupt? And they said, it's the one who has no money, who's got no property. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, no, it's the one from my ummah who will come Yom Al-Qiyamah with his prayers, with his fasting, with his zakat. But at the same time, he abused so-and-so. And he, he falsely accused so-and-so. And the rest of the hadith continues with what we will engage in in the last part of the khutbah. <clears throat> so then it gets to, وَأَكَلَ مَا لَهَادَ وَأَكَلَ مَا لَهَادَ And he wrongfully consumed the wealth of this one. وَتَحْكُمُونَ الطُّرَاثَ Allah says, and you consume the inheritance, devouring it all together. 
Allah warned us of the fitna of man, of wealth, and how it's taken people, or overtaken people in their minds, in their intellect, in their emotions, in their feelings. So much so to get them to fall into this, what can a man have? So you can come, you know, on Qiyamah, the day of resurrection, with prayers, fasting, and good deeds, afan and zakat, but it will be worth nothing because you wrongfully took the wealth of another person. Tilka hadood Allah. Allah, He has limits. They're set by Allah. A mirat, inheritance, has a limit, is a limit set by Allah. There's no room for your opinion. There's no room for your ideas. There's no room for your decisions. Allah took that out of the hands of Bani Adam, out of the hands of the children of Adam. Why? Because he knew that he would cause, that, not he, that the people would cause injustice. That they would wrongdo and oppress others. That they would steal from those rightfully who should have gotten something. So Allah, He took that out of the mix. You don't need to find a decision. It's all set by Allah. You don't need to look or come up with an idea or come up with your own decisive reasoning of why you should get this and someone else shouldn't when Allah wrote for them that it should be rightfully deserved to go to this person or that person. There's cases every day, people stealing the inheritance of others. And many times, this doesn't just fall on, other, on the men or the brothers, mostly it falls on the sisters. Oh, my saying my sister or my daughter or whatever maybe is married. She's well off. She has children who are educated. She has children who work. And so they say she doesn't need her inheritance. Or she doesn't get her inheritance. You have opposed the law of Allah. You have stolen the wealth of another person. You have wrongfully taken and eaten the wealth of another person. And yet you still see this happening with orphans. And youth. Wealth wrongfully consumed that they inherited. Or that was theirs by those who are kind of the overseers of it. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu ma, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَلَا يَسْرِقُ حِينَ يَسْرِقُ وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and when somebody steals, he is not a believer at his or her time of stealing. Dangerous waters, yet your greed, your love for wealth, it makes you go into these dangerous waters, ready to squander and lose all the prayers, all the fasting, all the zakat you've paid or given in your life. Another thing that can blow was safaka dam hada, and they wrongfully spill the blood of another. Abdullah radiallahu anhu he narrates in the awwal ma yahkumu bain al ibad fi dima. This hadith, which is sahih in the Sunnah of, uh, of Tirmidhi. Abdullah he narrated that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, the first, indeed, the first cases to be judged between the people are those of bloodshed. Because the case is easy. It's not going to take weeks. It's not going to have to go back and forth. This spilling of blood is enough to waste all your sins. This hadith, similar narrations of it are in Bukhari and Muslim. And the last one mentioned, وَضَرَبَ هَذَا and they beat this one and that one, striking the people without right, being heavy-handed, physically abusing others, burning up their fara'id, their good deeds, till they're made to be worthless. And the hadith concluded, so then this person is seated. And the one who you insulted and said bad things about, the one who you stole wealth from, the one who you hit, the one who you beat, the one who you slandered, they will come and take your good deeds. You'll be seated, they will come and take the hasanat off of your shoulders, the good deeds off of your shoulders. And if you run out of good deeds that you did in this life, you'll get to accumulate their sins. They can give you from their sins as payback. Who needs this? Who wants this situation, Yom al Qiyamah? Who has enough good and so little bad that they can handle being able to have good, good deeds taken off of them and have sins put upon their shoulders because of falsely accusing others, because of insulting and defaming and ridiculing and making fun of and backbiting and slandering others. 
Because of eating the wealth in this dunya, wealth that you cannot be buried with. So much wealth is a try to be amassed in this life, you don't even get to enjoy it. It only becomes a source of fitna for you. Who can tolerate that situation? Do not render your good deeds, your obligatory acts of worship, from the most beloved deeds of Allah, from the salam, the siyam, and the zakat. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهِ فِي الْحَدِيثِ الْقُدْسِ وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا فَتَرَقْتَهُ عَلَيْهِ The thing that the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah Azza wa said in the Hadith Qudsi, and my servant does not draw near to me with anything more love to me than the religious duties I made obligatory upon him. Instead of the Salah and the Zakat and the Siyam bringing you closer to Allah, closer to His love so Allah loves you and, and, and gets to the point where you do the Nawafil and then Allah loves you. Yet you will burn it all up because you chose to render them void, to have no benefit to be weightless, to be meaningless because of the sins you fell into, specifically mentioned in this hadith, verbally abusing others. We all know what happens between the spouses and the parents and the kids, between the kids and the parents, between siblings, between brothers and sisters in the community, falsely accusing one another, especially with regards to chastity, wrongfully consuming the wealth of another person, Taqullah ya ibadullah. Fear Allah, O servants of Allah, especially with this one. How many families are broken up because of just the inheritance and who took what? Even though Allah legislated it, you got no business deciding who gets what. Spilling the blood of another and beating another. So let us take heed of these warnings and not be of those who are truly bankrupt in the sight of Allah. Do not meet Allah, Yom al Qiyamah with prayer and fasting and, and zakat being given and it's scattered like dust, like you got nothing that can help you. Like you did nothing, like you were bankrupt. You got no deeds to show Allah of the good you might have done in this life. Allah said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ خَيْرٌ بَرِيَّةِ خَيْرُ الْبَرِيَّةِ Verily, those who believe in the oneness of Allah and believe in His Messenger Muhammad Wasallam and fulfill the obligations that were ordered by Islam and do righteous deeds, they are the best of creatures. They are the best of mankind. The males and the females. So let us take this yet, another hadith, short and brief from the Prophet ﷺ, with such a deep meaning. If we want to be successful, earn the mercy of Allah and be rewarded with Jannah, we have to be mindful of these short pearls that our Prophet ﷺ dropped upon us. couple... A uh, few quick announcements. Number one, be careful. June in the month, in, in, I don't know if it's just in America or the world or whatever, it's known as Pride Month. We've given the khutbahs in the past. We know the rulings. Again, there's no if, and, or but. There's no way to sway it. This month that they call Pride Month to يعني, bring to light or honor or respect the LGBT, whatever other letters come after it, movement, is not something we partake in, nor something we should feel sensitive towards. We always enjoy good character. We always enjoy being truthful, being honest, being friendly. Okay? But this doesn't mean that we give up our deen. There's nothing to be proud of with this thing. It is one of the causes and the sources of the destruction that has come and is coming to this world. Because of the... Yani, shamelessness of some people to indulge in such evil and filthy things. So it is a must, unfortunately, because يعني, they've taken something that normally we see in the sky and we say, subhanAllah, and they've made it their image. In these rainbows and the likes of it, be mindful of it. It is a serious thing. It's being shoved down their throats in the schools. It is has been, is, never will be something accepted in Islam. And it's something that unfortunately, if your children come to you questioning things about it, you must be very strong on this point. So that no doubt wavers in their mind about the ill filth and the evil of this action, these actions. Number two, summer school. We are offering it for the children, ages 5 to 17, in the masjid. Starting Monday, June 5th, going till the 26th or 27th, Hasbid Eid. 
based upon when the Eid Al-Adha is going to be, which might be on the 28th or 29th, and Allah knows best and will announce as soon as we know. So Mondays to Thursdays, 10.30 a.m. till Dhuhr time, a great place for your kids to spend some time in the masjid only in the month of June. So it's literally يعني, going to be uh, for 13, 14 days of their summer. Yet they can hear the words of, the, of, of Allah, the Qur'an, study them, recite them, memorize them, implement them, and the likes. And lastly, there are green sheets. We've wavered upon this. We're always يعني, focusing on the academy, and without a doubt, that is a priority. But the masjid is continuing to run at a higher level, and we're wanting to do more and more activities. We want to bring back our guest speaker, who is coming at the end of August, inshallah, Muhammad al-Maghrami, hafidullah. And we want to hold other functions and events, family nights. Instead of always asking for a sponsor this, sponsor that, we need monthly donors, who just sign up. You can go to the website, click on the donate button. They will say one time or monthly. You press monthly. You can set the day and the time per month that you want it to come out of your account. $25, $50 $25, $50 helps greatly. If you could do more, great. We just need it to be consistent. The family nights, the conferences that we want to have, the kids' Islamic schools, the extra power use, we succeed, we uh, supersede the amount of energy that the solar panels are bringing, especially with the increased rates of PGE, water, the other monthly bills and services, doubling the security on Fridays, maintaining the masjid after 10 years. 10 years, June 7th, 2013, this masjid opened for us to hold Jum'ah and the lights here. After 10 years, keeping it clean, keeping it looking nice inside and out, this takes a lot of maintenance. A lot. You may not see it, but it takes a lot. Your continuous donations are needed. Not just the ones on Friday, those are great, may Allah reward you, but you can sign up. Your credit card information is secure, it's safe, it's not getting nowhere. You'll be charged on the same day per month, or on the 5th of every month, or you can go to the website and sign up for it yourself, and it can happen monthly. We need to increase this quite a bit if we want to keep sustaining, and we want to keep increasing what we're doing. Barakallahu feekum. Allah makhtabu al-Muslimin wal-Muslimat, wal-Mu'minin wal-Mu'minat, al-Ahiyat minhum wal-Amwad, innaki antasmi'a mqalib al-Mujib al-Da'wad, ya muqalib al-Qulub, thabit qulub ala deenik, ya muqalib al-Qulub, thabit qulub ala deenik, ya muqalib al-Qulub, thabit qulub ala deenik, subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun, wa salamun ala al-Mursaleen, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.